Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2022 Panini Donruss Optic Baseball. It's a double header, a dual case break, 24 total boxes. This is random team uh, break number two. A lot of nice stuff here. No vet commons ship. Big thanks to this group for making it happen. Thanks to the people who bought their spots straight up and uh, congrats to the people who won their spots in that Topps Chrome Jumbo Pack break. No combos, all 30 teams are in. Let's do it, let's roll it, randomize it. Five and a three, eight times for each list. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eighth and final time. After eight, got Calvin down to Michael. Five and a three, eight times for the teams. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eighth and final time. After eight, we got the Nationals all the way down to the M's, the Mariners. All right, so here's how it shakes out. Calvin with the Nationals, Cassandra with the Tigers, Dante with the Diamondbacks, Jimmy with the Royals, Greg with the Phillies and the White Sox, Nathan with the A's, Josh with my Dodgers, Bill with the Blue Jays, Patrick, Last Spot Mojo, Cubs, Michael with the Angels, Dante with the uh, Giants, Jonathan with the Brewers, Chris with the O's, Jimmy with the Guardians, Craig with the Padres, the Padres, yeah, Patrick with the Rays, Colin with the Rockies, Sugar Bean with the Pirates, Devin with the Mets, Edgar with the Reds, Steven with the Braves, Jake with the Twins, Jason with the Rangers, Simon with the Red Sox, Kevin with the Yankees, Greg, Marlins, Astros, Chris, Cardinals, Michael, Seattle Mariners. It's alphabetized by team. And we're going to pause the video. When we come back, we're going to see if there's any trades. Then we'll have the break. Stick around, BRB. All right. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. No deals done here on the 9th, on a Monday night. No trades in this doubleheader. Patrick got last spot mojo. Cubs, 70% of the time. Last spot mojo hits 100% of the time. Is that sweatshirt? I, I might have to pop this hoodie off with all, these, with all these packs I'm about to break here. All right, so doubleheader. Let's go. Uh, anyone in this break watching live right now? I know Nate's here. He's got the A's. Greg's got some teams in this too. That's Dash in the chat. Anyone, and anyone else in this break? Just those two watching? That's, that's fine. That's good enough for me. Two autographs per box on average. So a lot of auto potential. This traditionally has a lot of... Uh, a lot of parallels here too. Ultra rare neon and Fort Knox inserts. Right, I suppose those also jump out at me when I see them. How many hot boxes per case? Edgar is here. Edgar's got some teams in this. Well, previous years, I think two, right? And there would be like, I think what, I'm trying to jog my memory here. I think previous year, there was like a Carolina blue hot box. And then there was one where there was, there was a parallel in each, like a numbered card in each pack. Or, or did some of them have extra autos? I guess I don't know if they reconfigured it or configured it differently this year, but we're going to find out together. Maybe it was a Prism hotbox and then an auto hotbox, and the autograph hotbox had a, it was three instead of two or four instead of two, something like that. I wonder if Nick wrote that, copied any information to the description. Oh, each case will have... Oh, there you go. Under product highlights, 
We should have, we should have read the description, Edgar. Each case will have two autograph hot box, which will contain five autos a box. And uh, wait, each case will have two autograph hot boxes, which will contain five autographs a box, and two prism hot boxes, which will contain twenty numbered parallels per box. So four of the 12 boxes will be hot. I'll take it. I kind of like the, I like this design this year. Oh yeah, you and me both. Okay, so that's not a parallel, but that still looks cool. Is that, what is that? Is that the neon? I don't know how ultra rare that is. I'll sleeve it first and deal with it later. Say Suzuki Hollow for the Cubs. Patrick, Tony Santillan, that's for you. Edgar and the Reds. I don't know. I like I like that there's a little... It kind of cleaned it up a little bit. Feels a little more... A little more simple. Simplified. There's the rookies, O'Neill Cruz. I kind of like the... I kind of like the, those geometric shapes there. There's Freddie Freeman, red, white, and blue to 199 for my Dodgers. That will be for Josh. And our first autograph, nice one, Ellie De La Cruz, Edgar. With the Reds, got randomized the Reds. Rated prospect, on-card autograph. Supposed to be one of the bigger names in the hobby, hopefully. 25 out of 25. We got Romy Gonzalez to 249. You know, in the interest of time, I'm gonna have our I'm gonna have our sorting and shipping team sleeve and top load those. There's Colton Welker to 50. Just because there's gonna be so many parallels here, I think. All right, Brandon, what's going on? How are you? Happy New Year. Here's Matt Manning, rated rookie on card autograph for the Tigers. Cassandra with the Tigres, 22 out of 49. Vacation was great. Good to be back, though. The winter break was good. Spent some time with, uh, well, my parents retired and they uh, last summer. And they moved to... Uh, they moved to Las Vegas, where my sister has been working and living for a number of years. And I guess my sister's a Nevada now because she, I think she, she kind of recently, a couple of years ago, got officially got a uh, Nevada license plate and a Nevada driver's license. So I think I think she's gonna. I think that's where she's gonna be. So now my parents are there. So. So, uh, so yeah, that's where I was, Greg, yeah. So, well, now that my parents are there, I guess for the holidays and everything, that's where I'm going. Although, it's not like they live on the Strip, so it's it's outside of the Strip. It's very suburban, surprisingly, in, uh, in Las Vegas. Gilo, what's up? So, I spent almost a, a week there. Like five, I spent like five or six days out there. Then I went to uh, then I went to drove to uh, Scottsdale where, where my old high school buddy of mine, one of my best friends from high school and his wife his, his cute kids where they live. So went to Scottsdale and I was there for New Year's Eve and almost spent a week there. Just hanging out, you know, reading the kids' bedtime stories, teaching them how to play baseball. Going out for some nice food, hanging out, drinking. Uh, my parents are in uh, where are they? I don't know what the what the region is, but they're in, I guess, southwest Las Vegas, west of the 15, south of the 215. If you're familiar with that, area. yeah, I'm dual casing it by myself.
And we got AJ Alexi, rated rookie autograph for uh, for the Rangers. That's going to be for JK, Jason K. No, Henderson is is like southeast of Vegas. That's Kyle Hendricks. And much further away from, like, I guess, kind of outside of Vegas. They're, they're more Vegas, Las Vegas proper, but in the south, uh, southwest. And what were you doing, Brandon? Oh, you're finished wedding planning. Two months out now from the wedding. Where are you having the wedding? Is it a destination wedding? Anything fun or just maybe around town? Mookie Betts to 25. That'll be for the Dodgers. That's going to be for Josh Reich. There's a Dallas Garcia to 199. O'Neill Cruz rated rookie and Lars Newtbar. Nutritious Newtbar is going to Chris Phelps from the Cardinals. All right, another box. Nothing too crazy wedding wise. Yeah, you learn that weddings are expensive as is. Don't need to reinvent the wheel. Yeah, I, I'm not married, never been. But I've been to a lot of weddings. Yeah, I really feel like they can they can get pretty you get pretty pricey. Yeah, this is kind of a long a long break right here. So usually I like to, whatever sport I'm breaking, that's usually the, the where I like to keep the conversation. But but in such a long break like this, a dual caser, we can float around to different topics. Brandon's saying, nice to see the Dolphins make the playoffs. But without two, I think next week they'll get crushed. I mean, is two, are they going to roll two out there? I feel like it's a little... Uh, I don't know. It's kind of scary to see sometimes him running around out there. Miami at Buffalo. That's going to be that was going to be a tough matchup even at full strength. Uh, at the moment, Vegas has the Bills minus ten and a half. Big favorites. Yeah, I mean, Phillies are looking pretty good. I think they've made some improvements all around. Shoring up the bullpen, obviously, Trey Turner on top of that lineup is going to be really dangerous. Yeah, Teddy Two Gloves gives a better option than Skylar Thompson. Yeah, get Teddy out there. Yeah, Jared Goff rocking the Two Gloves. Gilo went to his local card shop, supporting his local. Always support your local. It's Pete Alonzo to 35. Opened a mosaic football pack. Pulled a Quay Walker autograph. Just let the shop have it. Pete Alonzo going to Devin and the Mets. And we got a Nick Lodolo autograph for Edgar and the Red Legs. Watch Quay Walker is going to be a Pro Bowler next year. 
And Gio will be like, oh, man, what did I do? There's a rated rookie, Orange. Gavin Sheets, White Sox. That's going to be for G Dash. To 125. Greg on the board. We will do an autograph recap at the end of the break if you're looking for that. There's Goldie, 15 out of 99. For the Cardinals, that's going to go to Chris. Thought it might have been, but no, just just two in that one. Who does, have, who does everyone have in that Dolphins-Bills game? That's the first game on Saturday. Or on Sunday, that is. Bills minus 10 and a half. At Buffalo. Not sure what the weather is going to be like there. I guess that's, that's going to be a consideration. Greg would take Tua, or Greg would take the Dolphins if Tua plays. I think he's ruled out already, looks like, according to the injury report. I mean, I see that some of these Panini products be licensed the coming year. Curious how product pricing will be on something. Uh, well, I don't think that's going to happen, Brandon. Remember, Fanatics bought all the uh, all bought all the rights to uh, the MLB and the MLB PA licensing. So unless, I guess there has been speculation that Fanatics will buy Panini, but short of that. Short of that happening, which might happen, I don't know. But we may not see Panini baseball in general for a long time. Was Brian Della Cruz to one twenty five orange? Yeah, no two. Uh, Greg saying yeah, no way they can win. Yeah, it'll be an up uphill climb, that's for sure. Julio Rodriguez. I don't know. Maybe it's because I, 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 rip, I, I rip Panini baseball product a lot. You know, we've been doing this for, what, seven, eight years now? There's Alec Mills for the Cubs. I think when I first started doing this years ago, the, the lack of licensing was kind of a little jarring. Patrick, last Bob Mojo Cubs. But I gotten used to it over the years, and over the years they've gotten better about, you know, better about how they kind of angle or design the players to, to not make the that logo stuff as as obvious. There's Andre Jackson, rated rookie on card auto. I think the flip side too, is that, um, is that with the money they save on, the actual, team logo licensing. Especially the products like NT or Flawless, which are coming up. Pre-orders, jaspiescasebreaks.com. ABC, always be closing. Uh, sometimes you, they put that towards just getting better relics. So that's, that's, been the, that's been the plus over the years. 36 out of 99, TJ Friedel. Or Jeremy Pena Hollow. There's a Freddie Freeman Neon. I think they said that that was, uh, the box said it was a shorter print. I 
All right, next box. Well, Gilo's saying Teddy Bridgewater can do well if he shows up. Yeah, that could be interesting. Yeah, brands like you never know. Taylor Heineke almost beat the uh, Super Bowl Bucks in the first round. Any given Sunday. Should we run through the... Uh, kind of like doing this. Should we run through the schedule? So we got two Saturday games. First Saturday game will be uh, Seahawks at Niners. Seahawks at Niners. Niners are minus 10. Who does everyone have there? No, I, I really want to be, Brandon. I'm not, not into a lot of collegiate athletics. Just ran out of hard drive space for that. I mean, I'll get into it when the tournament rolls around. But... Edgar says, Niners win, but I'd like an upset. Yeah, Lions Niners would have been cool. Gilo, you think you really think the Niners are gonna make it all the way to the Super Bowl? Is that what you think? Niners Bills Super Bowl, that would be fun. Yeah, I think the Niners have to win that outright, but I may take the Seahawks plus 10. I'll have to think about that. I'll make my final decisions later this week, but I'm leaning Seahawks plus 10. I feel like when the Niners lay a big number, they never really, uh, yeah, and they got what, Brock Purdy playing? If, if the Niners laying a big number, they usually don't, really don't cover that big number. They have some difficulty doing that. Yeah, Edgar thinks, yeah, Purdy struggles under the playoff pressure. There's Brandon Crawford to 35. Is This might be our Prism hotbox, parallel hotbox. Jackson Coart at 249. Yeah, it is. Stephen Kwan to 76. We got Casey Mize. I think that might be that photon parallel. I don't know if that's short printed in this set. Kershaw to 149 for the Dodgers. We got Nick Allen to 199 for the A's. Spencer Strider for the Braves to 125. Stephen Carney for that one. Uh, Nick Allen again to 149 for the A's. Both of those going to Nate. We got Joey Votto blue to 75, and an auto Tyler McGill. Signature Series autograph going to Devon and the Metropolitans. Gilo's arguing, though, hey, isn't Debo back, though? Brock Purdy might not do too much. Kevin Smith to 149. Corbin Burns to 99. Use the Force, Luke, to 199. Luke Williams, Miami. O'Neal Cruz, rated rookie. Pink. Velocity. That'll be for the Pirates. That'll be for Sugar. Taking it to the max. Max Scherzer to 149. Pink Velocity. Ronald Acuna Jr. to 50. Tyler Glasnow to 125 for the Rays. That'll be for Patrick. Corey Seager, Rangers, that's to 49. Miggy, red to 60. Connor Wong, rated rookie orange to 125. Otto Lopez to 149. For Toronto, and your autograph is Dari Moretta, Elite Series autograph for Edgar and the Reds. Alejo Lopez to 199 also for Edgar. And the rookies, O'Neill Cruz. All right. Another box.
Yeah, the Bomb Squad inserts are pretty cool. I wonder if any of those are autographed. Yeah, a bomb squad set would be pretty cool. Are there any downtowns or anything like that in these? Kabooms? Anything like that? I'm not sure if we should be expecting those or not. Edgar, who do I think is going to be see pulling through from the NFC all the way to the Super Bowl? It's a very good question. Um, I mean, just glancing at the NFC, I think there's really only two teams that are going to go to the Super Bowl. It's got to be the, the top two seeds, either the Eagles or the Niners. And between those two teams, I'm leaning the Eagles. I think they're just... They're just too good. I mean, there's not too many weaknesses on the Philadelphia Eagles. Quarterback play has been incredible. Uh, team turnovers are down. I think team sacks, I think, leads the league by a lot. They got a great offensive line. They could run the ball. They got a mobile quarterback. They got Devonta Smith to stretch the field. A.J. Brown's a big target. Dallas' Goddard, tight end, is great in the flats. Defense seems to be great at all levels, right? Defensive line, linebacker, secondary. Special teams, I feel like, is pretty solid. You got a strong, a strong kicker. You know, it's just really, yeah, they need to get healthier. But they got a week off. That's got a that's a big that's a big help. It's Ty France for Seattle. That's gonna go to Michael Losia. So there's really uh, there's really not you know, there's really not too many weaknesses. They just have to put it all together, really. It's Cody Bellinger, Dodgers edition to 99. Wander Franco, the rookies, hollow for the Rays. Patrick for Tampa Bay. I think the Niners are the only team that can stop the Eagles. They're just as balanced. They are, actually. But I think the, I bet, but the big difference there, though, is that the Eagles have the much better quarterback. And that'll be the difference there. There's Kevin Smith, rated rookie autograph for the Blue Jays. Bill, one of the Bluebirds. 12 out of 49. And a Wander Franco, 200 out of 249. It's a nice parallel for Patrick and the Rays. All right, I think the hoodie is coming off. It's getting a little warm. Well, that's the second game on, that's a, that's a good segue, Edgar. Greg was saying, hope the Chargers come out of the AFC. That'd be good for the hobby. Edgar saying, I'd like to see the Chargers advance, but I think they lose this week. Well, Chargers are in Jacksonville. Uh, the Jaguars are the slight home dogs at plus one. I feel like... I think we'll get to that Minnesota game after this one, Greg, but I think... Uh, I 
Jaguars have been playing some great football. They've been on they've been on a good roll, good momentum. I think so are the Chargers too. Chargers have been getting healthier as well, which is kind of scary. They are the home they are the road favorite at minus one. But they're going west coast to east coast. I think they were on the road. They were in Denver. Uh, no, where where are they where do they play? Who did they play last game of the year? They were yeah they were at Denver. So they're going from at Denver and the second road game in a row. With the which is all already difficult enough. But uh, yeah, Niagara feels like the chart. The last thing, sometimes the coach, the Chargers coach, for Brandon Staley, I think, sometimes makes like this odd decision here and there. You know, maybe gets too aggressive on a fourth down at the wrong time or something goofy like that. I feel like they'll do something goofy, some goofy play calling or, or poorly timed trick play or poorly timed go for it on fourth and short that doesn't work out. I feel like they'll do something where the, you know, where the Chargers are kind of kind of charger. And until they prove otherwise, I think that's always going to be something that's going to be in the air. Some self-inflicted, uh, right? They sometimes they try to get fancy and it backfires. Good QB matchup though. I mean, in a matchup like that, here's Angel Zerpa, forty-one out of one hundred. This might be the autograph hot box. When it when it gets to something like that, then you start thinking, you know, if if they're sort of on if those teams are on equal footing, what team has the edge? And where is it? There's Trevor Rogers, thirty five. Edge might be coaching. You know, Doug Peterson versus, you know, the Chargers coach. I mean, you're taking Doug Peterson in that matchup. I think there's Josh Lowe for the Rays, Patrick. Rated rookie gold should be out of 10. It is, three out of 10. Yeah, these Bomb Squad cards are pretty cool. Brandon was pointing that out. Yeah, this is the autograph hotbox. Here's Joan Adon, rated rookie for Calvin and the Nationals. Gilo saying Chargers are a true Madden team. How so? In terms of like the talent they have on that team? It's Joe Barlow to 99. Got a base Wander Franco and the rookies hollow Wander Franco. Patrick and the Rays. There's a little dent right there in that card, but manufacturing error, I think. And we got to 49, Colton Welker, rated rookie autograph. It'll be for Colin and the Rockies. 13 out of 49. And there's Reese Snare, rated rookie autograph, hollow for the Padres. That's going to go to Craig. And there's a Garrett Cole, red, white, and blue to 150. I think where, where, where would I go with this? I think I would lean. So if I'm leaning Seahawks plus the points, I may lean. You know, I may lean. Uh, I may lean Jaguars. Plus one. Yeah, better coaching wins that game. I think so too. Oh, I see, I see. The decision making players built like a video game team, always going for it. Right. We talked a little Dolphins Bills. I think, I don't know if I'm taking a side on this one. Minus 10 and a half is a lot to lay. But if I'm forcing myself to pick something, then I, mean, I would probably lay the points. With the Bills. Uh, Greg was talking, was asking, does Kirk Cousins actually play well in the playoffs this year? 
Yeah, Kirk Cousins in the playoffs or in or on an island game in like prime time seems to seems to be an issue. Giants are in Minnesota. And the Giants are the slight uh, the Vikings are a home slight home favorite, minus three. Now, Giants, I think I'll have to look at the numbers. I know last year, I think this year is somewhat similar as well, but Giants as a road dog in the last two seasons, I feel like have been, have been a pretty good play. You like that? You like that? I could see the Giants... All right, I can see the Vikings winning. Do I see the Vikings covering? Vikings also, if you look at their record, they've got a lot of like one score game wins or last second wins or you know, last minute field goals that a lot of close ones. I may be I mean, I don't know if I'm going to win this one, but I would lean Giants plus 3 just to account for some goofiness that might happen. You know, there, there may be a weird scenario where the Vikings kick a last-minute field goal to win, but only win by two or something like that. But we'll see. Will Kirk Cousins kind of shed that, you know, that sort of, you know, label of him not being able to perform at the big moments. 15 out of 49, Vidal Brujan, rated rookie for Patrick and the Tampa Bay Rays. That's for the spot he won in the filler. We got Mike Bowman, rated rookie autograph. Nice little color match, orange parallel for the orange team. Chris Parent with the O's, 24 out of 100. There's Alejo Lopez to 75 for the Reds. And there's Yerman Mercedes, 46 out of 50. That's a cool looking card there for the White Sox. That's going to go to Greg. G Dash. Colton Welker, rated rookie autograph for the Rocks. It's going to be for Colin. Alakner, are we waiting for the filler in that multi-sport break? I think so. Two fillers, actually. When, when it, when it, we need to get to we need to get that to its last filler. But yeah, just the fillers left. In fact, we we may cancel a filler tonight. Ooh, nice Daniel Lynch out of five. Add ten spots back in just to make that the last filler. Nice Daniel Lynch. Jimmy with the Royals. Out of fives and under, get the train whistle. All aboard the Big Hit Express. Whoop, whoop. All right, another box. Yeah, Edgar's thinking the New York football giants lose if they can't shut down Jefferson. If they do, they just might have a chance. Yeah. Giants had a pretty interesting season. You know, they started off the season, their first one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games, only eight, nine games, they only lost twice. Then it was a loss to the Lions, a loss to Dallas, a tie with Washington, got smoked by the Eagles, then beat the Commanders, then lost to Minnesota. So there is a rematch. 
factor there. You know, people do say that, hey, you see a team twice in a season. If you lost to them previously, they might win the next time. Manhandled the Colts and then lost to the Eagles. That's kind of how their season went. So we'll, we'll, we'll see what that, that means leading into the playoffs. Um, yeah, besides the fact that Edgar's an Eagles fan, he's like, how, can you trust Danny Dimes? Right. Could be a big game for him. I think he's on his, isn't his fifth-year option up in the air? Or maybe a second contract at least might still be in question. That, that, might, that might be the make or break. The, so those are your, your Saturday games, Seattle, San Francisco. We talked about that. Chargers, Jacksonville, two games on Saturday, three games on Sunday. Miami at Buffalo. The middle game is New York at Minnesota. And the late game, the night game, is Baltimore at the Ravens. Who does everyone have there? Baltimore at Ravens. I think Lamar Jackson, is he out? Is he officially out? Lamar Jackson might be out. Bengals are minus six and a half. Home favorites, minus six and a half. I mean, without Lamar Jackson, at least that's what the current set is. I suppose that could change. I guess same with two as well, but... Let me see what it is. It's only Monday today, so there's still probably practices to go through. But I think, yeah, I think Cincinnati takes it by a touch, especially if Lamar Jackson's not playing. You know, it's kind of hard to hard to believe in the Ravens. You think since he takes it by a TD, says Edgar. Gilo, you think Cincinnati is boring? Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, that's a kind of an exciting team. There's Josiah Gray, rated rookie autograph for Calvin, former Dodgers prospect. I don't know, I, I, Jamar Chase seems pretty fun to watch. Alex Bregman to 149. We got Otto Lopez, six out of ten. Nice low numbered rated rookie gold for Jason K and the Rangers. I'm um, I'm sorry. It's a Bill and Toronto. Different T team. Who am I thinking of? Who isn't there an auto? No, there's I think there's a Glenn Otto on uh on the Rangers. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Exciting team, just not flashy like the other teams, like your Chiefs, Gilo. Is that what you're trying to say? There's Jaron Duran. Duran, hungry like the wolf. Yeah, you're a Mahomes. Yeah, you're also a Mahomes guy. You're spoiled, see? There's Angel Zerpa to 199. It's for Kansas City. And some more gold, Nick Prado, Kansas City gold, 4 out of 10. Yeah, Gilo, you just wait 15 years later after Mahomes hangs it up. Right, and then, then you'll just be, and after Kansas City goes through, no Andy Reid, no Patrick Mahomes, going through the, the quarterback carousel once again, and you'll be telling your grandkids, I remember when you should have seen Patrick Mahomes. Now there's a quarterback.
Um, and Edgar looking at to the final game on Monday night. Cowboys at Buccaneers. Buccaneers home dogs plus three. Both teams coming off some uh, some losses that are that are not good. Cowboys lost in Washington, twenty six to six. Only six points for the boys. And uh, and the Buccaneers, they were in Atlanta. They lost thirty to seventeen. So I don't know. <laughs> Who do you go with? Hard to count out Tom Brady in the playoffs. Jaron Duran Duran to a two forty nine. Got Casey Mize to one forty nine. Henry Davis, rated prospect silver. Juan Yepes for the Cardinals. That's going to be for Chris. Gilo wants both of them to lose. Yeah, Gilo's tired of Brady talk, Cowboys talk. I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. Ooh, I am for real. That's Andre Jackson, Josh Reich, and the Dodgers. He might, he might get some run. Might get some starts this season, if not more. He's cut those walks down. Could be pretty dangerous. Brandon Crawford to 199. Yeah, you think they? You think the Chiefs will struggle? Uh, that's that's as a Raiders fan, Edgar. That's what I'm hoping for. Andy Reid to retire, and then the Raiders might have a chance if they get their stuff together. Do some more research on some of these games. There are some websites that'll tell you if you're into this sort of thing. There are some websites that'll tell you. Uh, I'll tell you how much of the bets and how much money of those bets are being placed on what teams, and you can kind of make an oppo public play if you want to. Sometimes that kind of helps. <laughs> yeah. That might happen, Edgar. Buccaneers crash out of the playoffs early. Brady rumor mill. Brady to Vegas rumor mill the fires up. Fans get their hopes up for nothing. And as soon as Brady steps into game one, he'll suddenly look like, you know, he'll suddenly look like, uh, I don't know, like noodle arm Peyton Manning in the last year of his career or New alarm, Drew Brees in the last year of his career. Although I would take a, you know, if I don't know how, how this would work. I don't know if it'd be a trade or what have you, but I would love to, I would love to make a run at Aaron Rodgers though. All right, next box. This 
might be a parallel hot box. I think it is. It's Josiah Gray to 149. Jonathan India to uh, 50. Colton Welker to 249. And uh, Wander Franco, the rookies, hollow for Patrick and the... Um, for Patrick and the uh, Rays. Christian Yelich to 99. Joey Votto for the Reds, 249. Tyler O'Neill to 76. Yeah, the Jimmy G idea has been kicked around too. It's Thomas Zapuki to 125. Mookie Betts to 199. Adalis Garcia to 25. Nice low number there. That's going to be for the Rangers. It's going to be for Michael. Yeah, Jimmy G knows the Josh McDaniel system. He's used to it. It's Freddie Freeman to 149. Rodon Alvarez to 199. Jeremy Pena to 249. Greg Diekman to 60. Charlie Blackman, orange. Tyler Gilbert for Dante and the Diamondbacks. I mean, I suppose I think a lot of Raiders fans want want the Raiders to draft a QB, but I suppose you can still sign like a, a Jimmy G for a little bit and then still Josiah Gray, Charlie Black, Blackman was to 125 and still draft a quarterback, I guess. Is on Hell Zerpa to 199. And Cal Raleigh is your autograph. 9 out of 49. Rated rookie autograph for the M's. Michael. Oh, yeah. Maybe Jimmy G, a little too fragile. Yeah, at least Derek Carr didn't. Usually, really didn't miss. Haven't missed a lot of games. Drew saying Aaron Rodgers to the Raiders. How does, how does that work? Isn't Aaron Rodgers. I don't. Don't have a full grasp of what Aaron Rodgers' contract looks like. Would it have to be a trade? Is that what it would have to be to 99? Or is he, does he have an opt out? Jonathan Eden, he has gold. Yeah, that's a 10. Nice one for Edgar and the Reds. One out of 10. Be a trade scenario? I wonder what that would look like. If it's a trade. Trade probably, says Drew. So then what does that trade look like? Do the, uh, is it a Derek Carr plus Darren Waller? I know the Packers are looking at Darren Waller at different times, trading deadline and the preseason. Derek Carr, Darren Waller picks? <laughs> it's a lot, but I feel like that's something that, something like that. Uh, yeah, that's, I think that's what I heard. Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams are pretty close. So if you're getting rid of one of Devontae Adams' best friend, Derek Carr, if you want to keep Devontae Adams happy, bring his other best friends back. You know? Carr and Adams? I don't think the Raiders would do that. If you're bringing Adams back, or if you're bringing Rodgers back to the to the Raiders, you definitely want to keep Devontae Adams around. I don't think that would make sense at all. Oh, that was a joke, I see. What happens with Lamar Jackson? He's a free agent. I, I, I can't see the Ravens letting him go, right? I think I feel the Ravens are going to pay him what he wants to be paid, you know? I mean, it's not like they're going to find someone 
they're kind of who are they going what are they going to do who are they going to get you know I mean I feel like you're essentially saying they're Shane Boz 249 I feel like you're essentially saying they're you're rebuilding if you get rid of Lamar Jackson if you don't re-sign Lamar Jackson in free agency I think that you're pretty much waving the towel and you're calling for a rebuild and if then if that's the case you may as well just gut the team get as many draft picks as possible draft a QB in the first round etc cetera, etc cetera, etc there's AJ Alexi to 199 And there's a Jake Berger. White Sox. Greg, the White Sox. You think they'll end up franchising him? Yeah, he's not going to like that. 45 out of 49. And a nice rated rookie hollow, Julio Rodriguez. Michael. Nice. Nice. Max Scherzer to 60. Spencer Torkelson, nice. Hopefully he's a nice bounce back candidate for next year. A number former number one overall pick. Highly touted, you gotta give him a little longer leash. Cassandra with the Tigers. Hold on to this one. See how that season goes and maybe see that value go up. It's Mitch Hanniger to 99. And Bomb Squad, Lad Guerrero Jr. Oh boy, but wait. There's more. We got another case to go. We got another hour to go, ladies and gentlemen. Let me make clean up a little bit here. And we'll do an autograph recap at the end of the at the end of this break. Alright. Zach Wilson. Seems like a Raider guy. Maybe in the uh Maybe the Mike Mayock era. The Mayock Rudin era, maybe. No, there's no way to fast forward through this, Mike Tower. You're stuck with me for another hour. Yeah, this is only the first case. This is going to bring us to the end of the night, folks. So everything else will uh, we'll break tomorrow. I don't think there's any orders anyway. Now, there are some orders, but... But yeah, this is the last break of the night. I don't know. Nick, Nick keeps doing these double headers. I, I don't know. I don't know how many years I have in me to be able to do double headers. At some point, I'll just I'll just age out of double headers. They're a little grueling. You know, you know what we need to do? We need to, we need to start doing double headers at the beginning of the day, not at the end of the night. That's what we need to do. And we'll usually have someone in the shop that can help us pack stack and Move to Vegas and you'll do the other uh, you'll do the other half or help me pack stack. We've joked around about that idea. And about opening up in, in Vegas or in Phoenix or something like that. Brand low to 249. 
Connor Siebold, rated rookie. Um, rated rookie autograph for Boston. That's going to be for Simon to 100. Yeah, I mean, my, my, my family lives out there. There's Reese Nair, 76 out of 100, San Diego. So they've moved away from, they've, my parents retired and moved from Southern California to Vegas, so I'm there. Yeah, no state income tax. Yeah, Gilo, I need to need to update the Jaspies CBA for dual casers. We need to make a dual case rule change. There's Andre Jackson to 50. Curtis Terry, rated rookie autograph. Rangers, Jason K. Although Donner's optic is not that bad. Yeah, we need more. We could use more tag team double headers. There's Mike Ballman to 99. Alec Manoa, nice. Blue Jays, let's build with the Bluebirds. 88 out of 99, but yeah, we've joked around with the uh, with the idea of Vegas or Phoenix. Oh, well, we should open up a shop there. And Ryan Vallad, 45 out of 49. I wouldn't mind Vegas. Although I feel like if I had a choice though, I feel like Phoenix might make more sense with so much spring training type stuff and so much Arizona Fall League stuff that happens and I feel like there's a lot more opportunities for um, a lot more opportunities for like uh, baseball players, you know, to maybe sit down and do breaks with us or something like that. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, spring training, obviously a lot more of a loose environment. And that's probably a time where players would want to join like join group breaks, spring training or something like that. As opposed to during the regular season, it's hard to get like players to be like, hey, spend your 162-game season, spend one of your days off hanging out here. So with all the baseball that we ripped, and with the power of fanatics, that could be fun. Yeah, Vegas does have summer league. I mean, yeah, once, once Vegas gets a baseball team and a basketball team, you know, then another branch might have to open up in Vegas. Yeah, get ripped with Jaspies. Get on the Big Hit Express. Let's rip it. Luis Frias, Diamondbacks. It's going to be for Dante. Who is the best baseball free agent left out there? Carlos Correa. He's not official yet. But other than that, I think all the... I mean, you'd have to kind of dig deep to see who the best free agent is. But all the big names, the top tier free agents, they're, uh, most everyone's off the board. There's Angel Zerpa to 100. Well, visitors, we're, we're not too much in need of visitors. We, we get a lot of, we've got some great walk in here. It's mostly operational costs if we want to shave that. It's Jake Myers for Houston, rated rookie Houston. 
And that will be for Greg. On the board with the Astros, Jake Myers rated rookie auto. You're going to spring training in Florida, Gilo saying. You're pretty excited. How long are you staying? It's Joe Ryan from Minnesota. I might, I might pop over for... A, I'm not sure if I have the scheduling's going to work out for me to see the Dodgers, but I may pop over to, to Phoenix to see a spring training game. But one of these years, what I really want to do, like, I really want to do it up. Do like a week, you know? It was Kyle Tucker to 99. John Heasley for the Royals. That's going to be for Jimmy. And, you know, and like, you know, get up early and do the, uh, you know, go early to a game, you know, see the players warm up, talk to players at the fence, that kind of thing. I don't know if there's a traditional case hit out of Optic, Stephen. Oh, nice. You're only there for a few days for a wedding. We're going to try to catch a Yankees game. All right. Weather should be really nice there compared to compared to Kansas City. Uh, the Fort, though that's just a short print, right? I don't think I saw a Fort Knox in the first case. So that might not fall one for a case. Might be more of a super short print or something like that. You know, you've been to spring training Arizona, it's fun. I've been to a game. I think that there was a Topps, Air, Topps Industry Conference that I went to. And we did, we were able to squeeze in a quick little game, but I haven't really done the, the full experience. You know, go see the batting practice. Go see the players walk around. Uh, yeah, that was an autograph hot box. I think every case has... Uh, a few hot boxes, I think, a couple parallel hot boxes, maybe one or two parallel hot boxes, one or two autograph hot boxes. Standard amount is two autographs per box, on average. All right, another box, Francisco Lindor to 76. It's Eli Morgan, rated rookie auto. Cleveland. Jimmy with the Guardians. Cleveland, this is for you. There's Juan Yepes, Cardinals. That's for Chris. Yeah, this dual case is kind of long, but it's pretty, pretty a breezy break. There's Shane Boz. Well, there's like a pattern, a consistency to it. So I think uh, I think it's a little bit easy. Not like the remember that Chronicles doubleheader we did like as a last break of the night. Chronicles baseball. That's a little tougher just because there's just so many things going on. There's like you know, three different top loader sizes, four different, five different cards and sets, and cards are upside down, backwards and forwards, and that gets to that gets to be a little, well, relatively speaking, and still I'm still ripping on. It's not like I'm digging ditches, but you know, relatively speaking, that's a little bit more of a more of a labor, slightly more labor intensive break, labor intensive break. I do too. I mentioned that at the beginning of this break. I kind of like what they're doing with the, with the sort of square, sort of a geometric look that they have going on. I like that. Do I think the Dodgers win the division this year? Yeah, probably. I don't think they're going to run away with the division as they have in, in, in recent years, or at least last year. 
What, did they win? I think they won the division by like 20 games or something crazy like that. I don't think that's going to happen. It's going to be a lot closer. I think they pretty much went wire to wire. First to first. So I don't think that's going to happen either. But I think that's good for the Dodgers. I think the Dodgers needed a little adversity last year. There, there were really no challenges in the regular season last year. So, you know, I think that was a bit of a problem in the playoffs, not being, not having that energy. Or not having, be able to fight through that adversity. They just thought, hey, it's like the regular season. We'll just cruise like we usually do. And I think having that will be pretty good. I think they'll be playing, playing a lot more young kids. And I think that'll be good too. Let young kids develop and grow throughout the season. And, you know, maybe those kids get hot towards the end of the season. That helps in the playoffs. You know, problem with the Dodgers last year, they needed a little more spark. We know what the we know we know what one through six can do in a lineup, right? But you know, seven, eight, nine hitters were a bit of a black hole in that San Diego series and on the flip side, the Padres had some great seven, eight, nine hitters. Same with the same with the Astros. Speaking of the Astros, there's Jose Siri going to Greg. Hey Siri. Sixty four out of ninety nine. Joey Votto to 199. And nice. Henry Davis, rated prospect autograph. And former number one overall pick. Sugar with the Pirates. 25 out of 25. Now, no, yeah, this will not be... Group breaking will not be on any episode of, uh, of uh, Dirty Jobs. Isn't that show coming back? Ozzy Albies to 149. Bobby Wood Jr., 20 out of 75, rated rookie card. Blue, a little color match there going to Jimmy and the Royals. And we'll never be royals, royals. Gilo, how often do they play that song, Royals by Lord, at the at 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 Royals games? They played every game. It's annoying. I would think they wouldn't play the song because it's. I think the song lyrics are and will never be Royals, which is a little. You know, you want people to be Royals at a Royals game. But I guess just because it has the word Royal in it, they're like they played every game. I don't mind the song. I, I like Lord, but yeah, I don't know every baseball game. I don't know about that. Like, when do they play it? Is is it like? They'll, they'll just randomly play it pre-game or throughout the game. Is it like a? Is it like one of those things that they play to get the crowd going? Is it one of those things where it's like do 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 charge, and then people say charge, and then they'll drop like and we'll never be royals, and then the crowd goes royals. Is it one of those things? No, she didn't. She said that song was inspired by a picture of George Brett. No, that's that's a lie. That, that's what she told Royals PR.
Yeah, I guess there's people misunderstanding lyrics. Yeah, that happens. Yeah, it happens on campaigns a lot, right? There's Lars Newtbart at 76. This might be the parallel hot, hot box. Brandon Crawford to 99. Tyler Glass now to 199. Jacob DeGrom to 149. Kyle Muller, 50 out of 75, is your rated rookie autograph. That's going to be for the Bravos. It's Stephen Carney. It's Bryce Harper to 249. Phillies. Julio Rodriguez. Hunter Green to 99. Local kid. Matt Chapman for Toronto to 199. Julio Rodriguez will go to Michael and the Mariners. Mackenzie Gore to 249. Kyle Tucker Orange, color match, Greg and the Astros. That'll be to 125. Jake Berger to 249. Curtis Terry, rated rookie to 10 for the Twins, Jake Kirby. Three out of ten. Inspired by George Brett when they met each other. <laughs> I just had a... Can you imagine? Old, 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 grumpy George Brett hanging out with, like, early 20s, like, millennial lord from New Zealand. Brandon Marsh to 125. It's Josh Lowe for Tampa Bay to 99. And Alex Degatti, Astros, Optographs, Rookie Auto for Greg and the Strohs. It's Kyle Schorber, 249. Got Patrick Mazika to 249. Chaz McCormick to 60. Gabriel Aris, Rated Rookie to 75. We got to 149, Ramon Laureano. Tony Santillan, rated rookie, red, white, and blue to 199. Did you really see a picture of him in the National Geographic? Onwards. Cradiac, what's going on? But the Kings finally, which Kings? Sacramento Kings or LA Kings? Or both? Hmm. Will we, I mean, probably, Tradiag, we, we, we get, you know, 99% of all the soccer releases that come out. Especially if it's tops. 
But sometimes that could be an in-store thing as well. Redemption is Julio Rodriguez. Nice. Optic Rated Rookie Signatures Hollow Blue. That's pretty nice. Michael with the Mariners. Nice one for Seattle. No sophomore slump. Come on, Julio. No sophomore slump. Let's pick up where you left off. Curtis Terry for the Rangers. That's a 249. Yeah, what's a blue auto number two? Or Stephen Kwan to 99. And we've got Patrick Mazika, rated rookie auto for the Mets. That's going to go to Devin in the Metropolitans. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sign your cards, Julio. Nate saying 75, Dash is saying 99. I think it's somewhere around there. Um, will the Sacramento Kings make the playoffs? They're currently the fifth seed. They got a nice little 21 and 18 record. I mean, I don't see why not. It's Connor Wong to 199. You know, there's extra playoff spots. They seem to be in a good groove as long as they're healthy. Yeah, Stephen Kwan is pretty underrated. If Julio Rodriguez didn't exist, you know, there, there's, a, there's a world in which Stephen Kwan might have gotten some more Rookie of the Year attention. Blue Velocity is out of 99. Trade egg saying blue is to 50. Blue Pandora is to 99. Red is to 75. Yeah, the Suns aren't as as lights out as they uh, as they were last year. They've lost six in a row, one out of their last nine. I think they're missing some players, right? Maybe, maybe missing Devin Booker or something like that. But and yeah, they're struggling a little bit. So are the Warriors. Nate seeing it, that blue Julio out of 50, if they get it, Jimmy says. Well, I hope, I hope they do. Otherwise, we, Jimmy, we might have to send you out to the ballpark in Seattle to hound Julio Rodriguez. For his, uh, for his cards. Or, I don't know what the sign policy is at Safeco? T-Mobile Arena, T-Mobile Park, what do they call it? What do they call that out there in Seattle? Uh, the Mariner Stadium, the New Kingdom. Um, you should have a sign out there, Julio, Julio, please sign your car, your Panini cards. T-Mobile now. There should be a sign. That could, that could get you going viral. Please sign your redemptions. You know, most of the, 
most of the population probably won't even know uh, what that even means. You might get on Sports Center, you know. Panini might even help you out. They're like, yeah, Julio, send us your cards back, please. We'd like to fulfill those redemptions, thanks. The stadium's all pink because of T-Mobile. It's annoying. Those aren't Mariners colors. That's Jonathan India. The 249. Ronald Cunha Jr. autograph. Stephen Carney, Braves. Sports Center doesn't know what Seattle is. That, that is classic... Uh, that is classic uh, East Coast sports bias. Although they did do a, they did put a sports center in LA, right? There's an LA a sports center that goes live from LA, right? Or do they not do that anymore? Is it all Scott Van Pelt now late at night? There's Luis Gill. Oh, they might not do the LA Sports Center anymore. Yeah. Well, West Coast gets screwed. Uh, eight out of ten. Luis Gill. Old Gill. For uh, Kevin and the Yankees. Vidal Brujan to 149. Husky Dolphins going on. Giancarlo Stan to 76. <laughs> do they teach geography at the Bristol Camp? I don't think they do. I don't think they do. Oh, the, is there still a late night LA one? Okay, that's good. I don't know. I'm, I've, I don't really watch. I really don't watch Sports Center anymore. Why watch Sports Center when you could watch uh, when you can watch Jaspies? Yeah, actually, Scott Van Pelt is, is actually cool, fun to watch, but all the other shows, I, I, I just, yeah, I don't think I, don't think I watch TV all that. I, the only time I turn on TV is for live sports, you know, and we can read a newspaper, we can read a blog, we can talk about all the sports stuff here, you know, I'm not so different from Max Kellerman. I just don't get paid as much as Max Kellerman. I guess I don't have the producers who, who can find all this information for me and research for me. But I think the U.S. map that have ESPN, Mike Tower, I think it stops at like Chicago. It's like Chicago, then Pacific Ocean. <laughs> Oh, I can't believe you're able to... You can watch Skip and Shannon. You identify with Shannon, Shark. Loses his mind, like you. Is that how you watch Sports Steel? I'm getting a better picture of how... Uh, how you melt down. Can't believe the Chiefs only scored 38 points. Should have been 45 if it wasn't for the refs. That's Gilo's world. That's Gilo's world. There's a neon Freddie Freeman. I think these are shorter printed.
I don't know who Rick Bayless is. The chef, Chris Bryant, 249. He gets angry and then happy and the skip just takes. If you, if you have wild mood swings like that, Gilo, you may want to see a, uh, a, a, a licensed professional that deals with mental health. There may be, may be something going on there. It's Gavin Sheets for the White Sox. UN, UN Shen Sharp. For Greg and the White Sox. And we got Chaz McCormick. Greg and the Astros. There's Luis Gill to 35. Is Shannon still on roids? Shannon Sharp still on roids? That's, that's the mood swings? I mean, that might be why Gilo has mood swings, too. It might be the roids. Gilo is pretty yoked. It's pretty jacked. Is pretty swole. You know, Mike Tower, I've not seen, uh, I haven't seen 30 Rock in the, I don't think I've watched 30 Rock past like season two. I want to say. I'm, just, I'm not a good TV watcher. Can't really keep track of it. Too many episodes for me to keep track of. I don't have enough hard drive space in my brain to handle that. It might be good for TV, Gilo. Oh, what's the best auto you made? There are so many. Steven Punk, you just got to rewatch the video. And there was also a part in this two hour video where. Uh, I give you a special million dollar break credit code just for you, Stephen Punk. So you gotta watch this whole two hour video to find the special code that I shouted out to you. Don't tell them everybody. Uh, yeah, I, I'll, I'm going to do a recap at the end of this break, so you, you'll get to see all the autos, Steve. Um, but I think, yeah, we pulled a Julio Rodriguez Redemption uh, blue parallel. That might have that been our best one thus far. There's been some other solid ones, but that's one of the top ones. I think we did figure out what it was number two, wasn't it? To, didn't we fig, didn't we decide that it was to fifty? It was Cal Raleigh to seventy six? And there's a Reed Detmers rated rookie autograph hollow. That is for the Angels. That's going to be for Michael Losia. I sure did, Mike Tower. Watch this whole two hour video to find it. After I upload this, this Anthony Bender, Optographs, for Miami. That's going to be for Greg. Greg, have all of your teams gotten at least one autograph? I think so, oh, except for Phillies, maybe. Julio Rodriguez right here. Well, he did get that Anthony Bender. Greg, spoke too soon. Play to the whistle. 
It's Mike Bauman to 249. Does Mike Tomlin leave Pittsburgh and go elsewhere? Because Wells says you have to prove there. I don't think he does. He seems like a pretty loyal dude, but I don't think he needs... I think he loves the challenge of building Pittsburgh back, the Steelers back again. I think he'd love to see that. Pittsburgh shares a practice facility with Pitt, so he's been watching Kenny Pickett for a while. And seen him around the locker room, so I feel like he's loyal to that guy. I don't think he wants to leave him. And I think he wants to say, hey, you know, not, not too many, you know, how many head coaches do you see stay on the same team but win Super Bowls with different quarterbacks? How often does that happen? I don't think too often. I don't think too often. Like Belichick always had Brady. Now different quarterbacks have gone on to win a Super Bowl with different teams, but Trying to think, head coaches, head coaches, same team, different quarterback, Super Bowl wins. I think that's pretty rare. So I think there is a motivation for him to be like, hey, you know, let's see what I can do with with Kenny Pickett. I think they do need an often different offensive coordinator though. There's Riley Adams. Steelers go after Dave Wanstead? David if Dave's if Dave's is uh Dave Wanstead still with us? No, he's still with us. Pete Alonso to 249. Has a coach won a Super Bowl in both conferences? Husky Dolphins saying yes. Who? It's Aaron Ashby for the Brew Crew. That's going to go to Jonathan. Wilson Contreras to 199. Cedric Mullins to 125. Jeremy Pena for Houston Hollow. All right, two boxes to go, almost there. I'm really starting to drag here in the, this home stretch. Stephen A. Smith reports, Stephen Punk saying Stephen A. Smith reported that Tony Dungy is interested in the Colts job, huh? Hmm. How old is Tony Dungy? 
Does he, does he want to? Does he want to go back into coaching? Sixty-seven-year-old Tony Dungy. Last time he coached was two thousand eight. I don't know. I think uh, I don't think he's he's gonna come back to coach. I mean, Gruden, John Gruden was only what maybe less than ten years removed from head coaching, and people were like. That's too much. That's too long to be away from the game. I don't care if you were, you know, in broadcasting, blah, blah, blah. It's too long to be out of it. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, I'm sure Tony Dungy's interested. I'm, uh, Stephen Pong, you can, you can report uh, to the world that Joe Jaspi, is interested in the Indianapolis coaching job, head coaching job. That doesn't doesn't mean anything though. Yeah, well, I mean, Tony Dungy, Mike Tower would definitely get a coaching job if he can get Andrew Luck to come out of retirement. If Tony Dungy says, "I can hundred percent guarantee you, I can deliver Andrew Luck," I feel like there will be a lot of teams raising their hands, going, "All right, let's make that work." Kyle Tucker to 249. Xander Bogarts to 75. Parallel Hotbox, Joe Barlow to 149. Rafael Devers, red, white, and blue to 199. And Tyler Gilbert for the Diamondbacks. That goes to Dante. Do you think Tyler Gilbert lives in Gilbert? Isn't there a Gilbert in Arizona? Isn't that an area? I don't. I don't know if that's like a nice part of town or a ni not nice part of town or. I don't know. Where do Where do you think Where do you think think at, Where do athletes live? Maybe Scottsdale. Gilbert could live in Gilbert. It's Dante. It's two forty nine. Connor Wong, Red Sox. It'll be for Simon. You got Hoy Yun Park to one twenty five. For the Pirates, Sugar. Connor Wong to 149 for Boston, Simon. Paul Goldschmidt, red, white, and blue to 199. Tyler McGill, rated rookie for the Mets, for Devin. Hear that rain? For uh, Devin and the Mets, we got Yadier Molina. It's two forty-nine. Matt Chapman to to sixty. Mike Yastrzemski to seventy-six. Giants. Matt Brash to ninety-nine. Seattle. Carlos Correa to one twenty-five. Kyle Tucker to 149. Juan Soto to 249. Tyler McGill, red to 60. Hugh Darvish for the Padres to 99. Maybe not. Super Bowl in both conferences, my fault. Yeah, I don't know. Has that ever happened? Has anyone, has any head coach even made a Super Bowl appearance with a team in t from two different conferences? It's Trevor Rogers to twenty-five. Nice little number there. Miami it goes to Greg. I mean, not too many coaches who who. Who just switch in the first. Place, right? 
Parcells, maybe? Andy Reid, right. He went to a Super Bowl with the Eagles, NFC, and then went and won a Super Bowl with the Chiefs. I don't think he won one with the Eagles, though. I think McCarthy, the Cowboys coach, if they don't go to the Super Bowl, he gets fired. If he loses this week in Tampa Bay, he definitely gets fired. So it's Super Bowl or bust for Mike McCarthy. And who, then who does Dallas go for? Sean Payton? I think that's been the sort of holy grail for, uh, for Jerry Jones, right? Getting uh, Sean Payton back. Dan Quinn get another shot? Maybe as a coordinator. All right, last box. We're on the home stretch, ladies and gentlemen. All right, final one. Good luck, everybody. We got Jackson Kowar. Rated rookie orange for the Royals. Jimmy. I will never be Royals. 58 out of 125. What teams did Parcells go to a Super Bowl with? Giants and John Halzerpa to, to ninety nine. Pats? Did he go to? A, did he do a Super Bowl appearance with the Pats? Giants and Patriots, two different conferences. That's pretty impressive if you think about it. There's Yachty to 125. All right, final auto is Camilo Duvall. Rated rookie autograph for the San Francisco Baseball Giants, Dante Rayford with San Francisco. And there you go, gang. 24 boxes of Donner's Optic Baseball finally in the books. Let's do a autograph and low-numbered card recap. Here's the first case first. Got a nice Torkelson, Julio Rodriguez Silver, some added 10s, some added 25s, some nice stuff. That was out of five, a little train whistle action here. Some nice color in all this, some Wander Franco Silver, some more out of 10 autographs, more Wander Francos, more Wander Francos, O'Neill Cruises, Sheets, Newt Bar, Bets to 25. Ellie Dela Cruz to open things up. Most recent case we did from the 12th box to the first in case two. A lot of nice stuff in here. A lot of nice color in the autographs. The Julio Rodriguez hollow blue. Sign your cards, Julio. Thanks. I also might have to send the Connell brothers after you. Chad Daw too. I made it. Hey, listen. Thanks, everybody, for keeping me company throughout a two-hour break. That definitely... 
That certainly makes things a little bit easier for me as well. Thanks, everybody, for getting into the break. Really appreciate it. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. I'll see you next time for the next one. Bye-bye.